I'm joined now by a co-chair of the president's 2024 campaign, Democratic Congressman Jim Clyburn of South Carolina. He is, of course, also assistant Democratic leader in the House. Congressman Clyburn, welcome back to Meet the Press. Thank you very much for having me back. Let's delve into some of these numbers. Our poll shows that President Biden is in a dead heat with former President Trump, who has been indicted four times. Why is that? Well, I think the American people are focused more on style than substance, and that is the way it is in politics. Uh, Joe Biden is uh, a man full of substance. Uh, the style is something uh, you get from another candidate, you won't get it from him. Uh, he believes uh, in democracy, he believes in the American dream, and he does what we, he possibly can to help people fulfill that dream and maintain this democracy. And that is not the kind of stuff uh, that you poll very well. Well, Congressman, our poll shows that the vast majority of Democrats want to see a challenger to President Biden. Is he the strongest candidate for 2024? I think he is the strongest candidate, and I uh, believe very strongly uh, that the American people believe that as well. When you are out this far, I remember uh, back, was, was it 2010 and 2012? Uh, we got shellac uh, in 2010, and in 2012, all the polls I saw uh, said Obama uh, had no chance of getting reelected. Uh, that uh, Democrats wanted an alternative to Obama. What happened in 2012 is now history. He won very comfortably, and I think the th same thing will happen to you. Well, as you know, in a close election, every single vote counts. And Absolutely. as we laid out, his support among some of his core groups, African Americans, Latinos, young voters, has dropped. How do you make sure they don't stay at home, Congressman? They will not stay at home. Uh, we understand what's at stake here. Uh, the problem with me is I spend too much time studying history and I see what's going on here. I know uh, where the playbook uh, came from uh, that resulted in January 6th. Mm -hmm. It came from the 1876 elections. Almost exactly named the places at the same stage, alternative electors. They had a scheme put together uh, with a playbook that came out of that election. Now that people are beginning to focus on that. And let me say something else. I was in that hall last night. Uh, I've been around here all week uh, with African Americans coming in from all over the country. If you think uh, that he's lost 17% uh, of support among African Americans, you just uh, got another thing coming. He is not in any trouble with African Americans in this country. I guarantee you that. All right. Well, let's turn to Vice President Harris. Do you see her as the future of the Democratic Party? I see her as a part of that future. Absolutely. Is I she see her. the future, though? Is she the future of the Democratic Party? Oh, she could very well be. I think she is running a very good uh, uh, campaign. Her speech last night was great. And I look to her uh, as a, a successor uh, to this president. Uh, but I also know the history of that as well. Uh, it's not a given. You don't automatically move up. She'll have to compete uh, going forward with whoever may have dreams and aspirations. And I think she will acquit herself well. Well, I know that you are saying you don't look at the polls too much, but our poll does show her favorability is actually lower than President Biden and even than former President Trump. Why do you think she's not resonating more with voters? What do you think the issue is? Uh, because when you compare the first uh, woman of color and first woman uh, to be vice president of the United States and compare that to all of the history before, you will get that. I think that during this campaign, she will demonstrate as she did in that hall last night, that she knows exactly what she's doing. She has the capacity and the capability uh, to be president of the United States if called upon uh, to do so. Let's move on to what is happening where you spend your day every day on Capitol Hill and the potential government shutdown that is looming. It seems like, based on my conversations overnight, talking to Republican sources, they are no closer to reaching a deal. Now there's some action in the Senate, potentially to try to get something that Democrats and Republicans can support. Tell me what you and other Democrats are specifically doing to try to avoid a shutdown here, Congressman. Well, we believe, we Democrats believe very strongly, is when you make a deal, you live by it. 
And the speaker made a deal uh, to what the budget would look like. Democrats agreed to it. House Democrats, uh, Democrats in the Senate, even Republicans in the Senate agreed to it. They have mocked up uh, to those top lines. And then all of a sudden, McCarthy seems to be backing away from the deal because five or six people on his side of the aisle seem to be uh, calling the shots. The tail wagging the dog is not the way you do this. Understood, but don't Democrats, given that it's a potential government shutdown, bear some responsibility? Is there any conversations? Are you having conversations behind the scenes to try to keep the government open? Well, Hakeem Jeffers is, he is okay. a great leader, and I think he's doing exactly what needs to be done uh, to keep the lines of communications open. As we sit here today, do you think the government will shut down? Is it a foregone conclusion at this point? It is not a foregone conclusion. And I don't think we'll get to that point. I certainly hope not. Let's talk about Senator Menendez, obviously indicted, as we've been talking about throughout the hour. Should he step down? I'm leaving that up to Democrats uh, in New Jersey. They have uh, a Democratic governor. But you're a Democrat, uh, yes. Congressman. Doesn't this cast a cloud potentially over your party at a critical moment? Should he I, step I down? I don't think so. We have to compare apples to apples. And, and when you compare apples to apples, I don't think you uh, compare a United States senator to the president of the United States. That's a big, big difference. Despite the fact that you have a long list of, Repub of Democrats who are now calling on him to step down, despite the fact that he's been accused of taking bribes to help Egypt, again, innocent till proven guilty, but these are serious allegations. They are serious, and I've read them, and uh, I hope they are not true. I hope there's an explanation that he says there is. I would like to hear it, but I'm gonna leave it up to him uh, and uh, his friends among the Democrats in New Jersey. Let me ask you about the impeachment inquiry that is going to unfold this week on Capitol Hill. I know that you and your fellow Democrats have called this pure politics, but big picture, they're trying to see if there's any link between Hunter Biden and the president and Hunter Biden's business dealings. Are you comfortable with a family member profiting off of their last name in this town? Well, you know, we all, to some extent, live so that our children uh, can be proud of the name that we've given them. I have three daughters, and I want them to feel very comfortable uh, being a Clyburn. And I do know uh, that that is very, very important uh, for going forward. Now, that doesn't mean that I want them to do things that are unseemly uh, to the name. I do want them uh, to use the name to their benefit. And yet, President Biden, according to one witness testimony, was on the phone 20 times with Hunter Biden's business associates. It was described as pleasantries, but is that appropriate? Well, his associates said they were pleasantries, but I think it's appropriate to be a father to your son. And if your son uh, is having a problem, and we all know the history of the problem uh, that Hunter has with addiction, and he is being a father to his son, you don't impeach a man for being a father to his children. Congressman Jim Clyburn, thank you so much for being here. Always thank you very much for having me. We really appreciate it.